My latest book, uh, The Story That Must Not Be Told, uh, is about an elderly widower living by himself in a high-rise apartment in Madras. Uh, he, why it, it's, he, um, he befriends a young boy who works for him and uh, through him finds out about the lives of people who are not like him. That is, uh, this boy living with his family in a slum next to the high-rise apartment. And he gets involved in their lives through this boy. And uh, as the story moves in and out of the slum and in and out of the high-rise apartment, we begin to ask the question of how people like ourselves who have everything can help people who do not have anything. And are we really able to help them? Is the compassion we show, the little um, kind deeds that we do for them, are they really enough? That's what the book is about. Um, I, I'm a doctor by profession and I have um, worked amid situations. In fact, most of my work is among um, people who are um, either in rural areas or very small towns and, um, you know, struggling migrant labor construction workers, these are the people I have treated a lot who are, I mean most of my patients belong to these these uh, groups. So uh, it evolved from uh, having seen people live their lives like this who have been my patients whose lives I have um, seen very intimately and closely. So I can say that um, although the story itself is imagined, uh, both the protagonist, the widower uh, Simon J. Sukumar he and um, the other characters, they are imagined, but they also have something, uh, some germ in the real people I have uh, met and seen and um, know quite well. I don't start with a story, I don't start with, uh, um, with any pattern in mind, I usually start with characters. And the character of Simon J. Sukumar, the widower living alone, that came to mind. And from there, I just uh, imagined his life. And I imagined this young boy called Velu, who works for him, and then his family, and then Simon's family. So the whole story grew out in that way. And then it went into the slum. And when it went into the slum, it must have, my actual real life experiences must have helped. I was also inspired, as I have um, shown by in my acknowledgments, I mean, the book is dedicated to two people. One of them is um, Kalpana Sharma, uh, who has written a wonderful book on Dharavi. And uh, I was really, the, the, the book and the way she describes the life in the slum, that really uh, affected me a lot, although I read it a long time ago when it came out. But um, it seemed to mirror the type of things I see among people who I have worked with. So her story really inspired me, you know, when I wrote the book, I'm sure, because in, in hindsight, I realized that it has influenced me. So I have uh, dedicated the book to her. It is always something that has troubled me throughout my life. It still troubles me. And a lot of Simon, in a way, is myself. The fact that all the little things we try to do, how, really how little it is, and uh, how in many ways impractical some of the things we do for them. You know, we think we are helping, we think we are doing a lot um, in our own little way, uh, but is it really adequate and is it what they want? That is the question Simon always asks in the book, is what do those people think of me? What do they think of me? He dare not ask them the question. I wouldn't dare ask somebody a question like that. That what do you really think of us, you know, going about in cars, living the posh life, or whatever it is, but it is different from theirs. Um, what do you feel like, you know, what, what does it feel like to have nothing and to see just next to you people who have everything? I dare not ask them that question because I feel they must have so much hatred, you know, or there must be so much uh, anger in them. And that anger comes out in the characters in the book. As you go into the slum and meet the characters and what happens to Simon, you know, he goes with such good intentions, but they don't always take it as good intentions, you know. So that conflict of what they, they perceive and what Simon perceives, he wants to do good.
but it is not always because there are people there who understand the superficiality of our goodness. They can see it, you know. So they, that is what the conflict is about. Um, when the, his house is built, he feels so grateful to the workers because he's looking at them and he says, oh gosh, so many people have worked so hard. I would like to give each of them a box of sweets, you know. So he tells the contractor and he finds out there are about 40 or 50 people who have actually built the house. So he calls all of them and he buys these boxes of sweets and gives each of them. And when he gives, some of them just look blankly at him and take it, some touch his feet or do this. And he's somehow at the end of that, he's disappointed. And as they go away, they just turn their backs and walk off. Some sit down and they start eating the sweets, you know. So he's thinking, he, I mean, in his mind, he actually expected lots more from them, gratitude. So this is what happens to us when we do things. We, we really think we've done a wonderful thing and we really want lots of gratitude or recognition for what we have done. But, but in, in some ways, why should, why should that person feel so? Because we've lived off them, you know? I guess it is only that if we can at least think about it, that is a start. Because you ask 100 people here, I think 80%, 80 of them will say that they do care about what happens, that they do help their maid um, or they do help somebody's child, you know. We, we all want to do some little acts of kindness. But how far are we going in contrast to the, how, the way we are progressing? So these are the questions and how, if we do not think of, think of it carefully now, I think um, there is going to be tremendous um, repercussions. It's actually a story that must be told. But I think a lot of people don't like to hear this story because it makes us very uncomfortable. Because it looks at us, you know, in a very, at, at our angularities about our goodness. And uh, so it is really uh, a play on the words that actually it should be told, but a lot of people don't want to hear it. For me, writing is all about, um, I mean, I use my, exp in hindsight, I lose, use a lot of my experience as a doctor. Um, but for me, it's all about the characters. And the story comes out from the characters. So I never ever have a planned book or a planned story. I, I just love um, living in other people's heads. I love, you know, finding out what their thoughts are and I love to use that and then see how it goes and then the story comes out, yeah.